All right, we'll call the meeting to on the agenda today. We guess we have a trio of guys out here. Tom Madden, Neil Holthouse, and Donnie Delora. Uh, Pestina Sewer Project Construction Services. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, so here today, just to talk a little bit about is to get everybody's feeling for what we should be doing for construction services. In the budget for the project, when we do the report, we figure a normal contractor, meaning that they don't need tons of babysitting and things like that. And that's the financing that's been moving forward with the state. Um, J.B. Holland's a contractor on the project. They're definitely at least normal, and they're probably better than normal, okay? So I got these guys sitting here too, but um, my proposal to you guys is, is that based on the caliber of the contractor that we have, that I would propose we just do a standard service package on this, meaning that we'd have a guy in the field two, maybe three days a week, depending on what's going on. You know, we don't need to babysit them every minute of every day. And there's some contractors that you do, okay? But these guys are not gonna have to do that. Um, I'll be processing all the pay requests. I'll be um, hosting any progress meetings that we have. I'll be in front of you folks at least monthly with updates on the project. Um, we'll be reviewing shop drawings and submittals. I mean, you guys feel okay with uh, Jay Holland and just being out there two, three times a week? And if, um, okay. Yeah, I'm just up the road, you know, from the project. So I mean, yeah. they're highly qualified to do the work, guys. It, and it just doesn't make sense to overkill it with somebody being out there every minute, every day. I mean, I wouldn't mind having you guys give me that much money, but I just don't think it's necessary. You're the one sitting out there, it gets pretty boring. It can't, especially when you get a good contract, like on the yellow book. <laughs> so I'm just saying, you know, we aren't taking action today. No. He's going to bring a contract next week, but he wanted to get your bill off. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what I think we'll proceed then. Um, and like I said, uh, I'm in the area enough, and I've got people in the area enough where, you know, if we need to come in, if something, you know, important is going on. But, you know, like I said, we'll be here two, three times a week, depending on what's going on. Um, then just do business as normal, not babysit them all the time. I think that's a real reasonable way to go about this. Save you guys some money um, in the long run there. And again, with the quality of contract we have, it's it's not necessary to do any more than that. So if you're if you feel comfortable with that, um, next week I'll bring a proposal for that, and that basically tracks then with the budget that everybody's been moving forward with. So no surprises there. Um, if we're all on track with that. So you guys got any questions? Yeah. Tom, do you think that Holland's got they should, they're ahead of schedule on on their work. I think out there at Ridgeway, you think they're going to be just I'll let just move it from one to the other. Yeah. So I talked to Chad, and what they're going to do is they're going to order all the equipment and everything now, and they're still planning on not mobilizing them until May and start the work. Um, also, for a quick heads up, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be meeting with Neil and the owner of the zipper because they own the property going down to the wastewater plant. Now there's an easement for a road there. And what I'm doing is working with Alliance to get an easement for power along that road. So I'll meet with the landowner uh, next couple of weeks. We'll get that shooken out. And, and then eventually Alliance is gonna come to you folks with uh, um, a proposal to put the power down there. As a stand, the power we're looking at right around $6,000, I think. And then whatever it's going to take to get the easement, which I can't imagine, just general gist of what we're we'll looking at to get power there. Uh, that'll be something separate, uh, included in the contingency part of the budgeting. Um, but once Alliant finalizes that, they'll have a package for you guys to review and approve, and uh, they'll get the power going down there. And again, we're early on that too because Jim doesn't need it till next year, but we'll get it in either. Late this year or right away next year. The driveway easement exists as of now? Yeah. Okay. But the the wording on those easements is usually pretty specific. It probably says, um, you know, uh, driveway and then probably sanitary sewer easement. It probably doesn't say all utilities. But uh, so Alliance going to get that square to hold the power to. But we'll meet with that property over the next couple of weeks. Um, I'll be meeting with the folks at the Stein as well, just give them a heads up on the project within that next couple week period, and we'll just kind of keep everybody to see what's going on. And that's all overhead feed. Yeah. On the line. Yeah. And timing's bad, of course, because all Alliance power used to be overhead. And now from, I think, about the zipper further to the 
north and west, they buried all that stuff. So but they'll have to run it backwards a little bit to get overhead, but that's all part of that cost too. But other than that, like I said, everything's, uh, we got all contracts and everything signed. Next uh, week will be the uh, public <coughs> hearing, the actual loan. Excellent. And then also we'll do get the contract for the, the engineering services next year. Cool. Would it be any cheaper or how much more would it be to have the power under? Oh, that's a lot more. It's like three. Well, the thing is, is yeah, well, because just to put it in perspective, the service for Fort Atkinson was 66,000 to go overhead, and it was like 15 or 12 to go or to go underground and 15 or 12 to go over that. It's a lot more to go underground for whatever reason. Four. So. Well, I guess I, if you feel comfortable going forward I do. this way, yeah. I see no reason why we shouldn't. Now we've got a good contractor, feel really good. And then again, I just don't think that it's worth the money to be out there anymore often. And it's and the power is all single phase, not yes. three phase. No. It's all basic power. So that goes back to the point of things being available. Um, because it is single phase, the availability of all the electrical components is right where we need it to be. So no problems there. All right. Well, I think we'll proceed in that direction. I'll be back next week. Um, work out a meeting with uh, Neil and the group to update the city. And then we'll meet with the property owner and get that home to all right. Sounds good. Thank you. That's all I got then. Yeah. All right. Thank Everybody you. Have a great day. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Appreciate it. We have the consent, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. We got the minutes and we've got a liquor license. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Any further discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Well, it's been a, a quick minute here. Um, the project that was funded by the National Trust for Historic Preservation is telling the full story preservation fund did the indigenous history tour from Northeast Iowa. And these brochures are, you know, anywhere you'll see a kiosk with brochures about tourism around Decora, the visitor center, park and rec, hotel and Ishi. And there are kiosks around Northeast Iowa. One is down on that side of the courthouse. And then on the park and rec trail heads, there'll be some that are interchangeable. And it tells the story of the Ho-Chunk, Winnebago and other tribes that were here. Uh, there's also one in Fort Atkinson, Bluffton, Kendallville, Lansing, Marquette, and Kelmer. So, if you have any questions, the picture is up here. Anybody have any report committee reports? It's been a hell of a policy board both this week, so I got to take a look at Landfill last Monday, but it was there, I guess. Nothing yeah. quick about Wednesday's meeting in the morning. No, I don't think that's quick. So. Oh. I think we should put it on an agenda for maybe next week or the week after to get a summary. It was a, a long day. <laughs> All the tower pieces are put together and laying on the ground in Washington, so Crane just has to come in and set those. So. That's progressing nicely. Yeah, that should be going right along. Well, it'll be tomorrow morning, so. You have it last week. We didn't have one because everybody was, nobody could attend the main guys. So I'll find out a little tomorrow on what's happening with that. Yeah, they have the main one all installed. So it's yeah, I just where they got to stack them. Trying to bring the crane in and do them all in yeah. one shot. Yeah. That was a nice thing when it's all right in the area. That's pretty easy to, a lot cheaper doing the two because yeah. they get them all one deal. The electricians have been there doing some of the underground electrical work and stuff like that. So.
<clears throat> just for the public, uh, we haven't heard anything about the sound system recently, so <clears throat> we'll check into that this week and make sure we have an update by Monday. So could you all speak up a little bit? <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. Thanks. Yeah. Well, it's 940. Next on the agenda, Melanie Teets discussed hiring process for county engineer. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Melanie Teets. My husband and I um, own and operate a farm in Frankville Township. And I was elected uh, and served on the Decorah School Board for 12 years. Four years of that, I was a president of the board. So I know a few things about hiring critical administrative staff and overseeing multi-million dollar budgets in many departments and hundreds of staff. I've been following the news around the county engineer vacancy and the hiring process. And I watched last week's presentation by the DOT engineer, uh, Nikki, is it? Stand. Yeah. And the news that you've had few applicants for the position. I'm here today to urge you to consider a 28E agreement with another county for an engineer position. Entering into an agreement with a willing county and engineer would allow bid letting and much needed road projects to proceed. I understood from Ms. Stin's presentation that this kind of agreement would need to be for a meaningful length of time that would provide stability and predictability for the DOT to move forward in awarding funds for projects. The DOT has 28E templates and experience in executing these agreements, and it appears that an agreement could be reached and implemented in a fairly short time frame, as opposed to the hiring process, which could literally take months to complete. The other advantage, of course, is the cost savings associated with sharing a position with another county with passing of the house file 718 this county will be and other counties will be looking for ways to trim your budget here is an opportunity to save money while not cutting personnel or services um, and indeed there are challenges uh, in a sharing agreement there would be need to be good communication between the two boards that entered into the agreement. Expectations need to be um, very clear for everyone involved. A mutually beneficial 28 year agreement would need to be negotiated. But most importantly, this arrangement would require the adherence to the chain of command and board members knowing their role. A sharing agreement could provide this board the opportunity to demonstrate that you are committed to change and perhaps generate more interest in a future application process. I know these issues were discussed with Ms. Stin last week, and I hope the information that she provided will facilitate you moving forward in a positive way and serving the citizens of this county. You want to believe those, what you read? It says discuss hiring process under this 940 inch fine, and we have until 10 o'clock i think he's brought up a really good point here and we should have discussion as a board uh, about this possibility we're we're kind of stuck with no good applications right now and this is a pretty significant job in our county and i'd sure like to see us be able to do the letting process on some of our projects sooner rather than later and get the ball rolling. So is this something this board would be willing to agree to look into, start the process to just at least check into this possibility so we can move forward? One other issue that we've already previously discussed was the search, search firm option. I did contact a one engineering uh, focused search group that uh, hires internationally and hires for public positions. Uh, the CEO, the president of that organization responded back to me, which was a surprise. And his response was he doesn't, he only works with very large urban area um, assignments. And I asked him for referrals, which he gave me a couple of referral or a referral of, a, of another firm that may be interested. I reached out to them, expect to hear, have some conversation with them, and then I'll turn turn that over when I find their 
availability to Ben to see and search to see if that's something that's worthwhile. And there's a couple of other options. One other response I haven't received back yet from a, a firm in Minneapolis that may be a possibility uh, to offer those services to us. You know, we've got this interim engineer right now, Nick Rissman. Um, would it be in our interest to have a discussion with him and the Howard County Board and see if they'd be interested in a shared agreement? He knows Northeast Iowa. He lives in Winnipeg County. Um, he's done a great job in the just the few weeks we've had him so far. I would agree with Shirley. I mean, it's going to take a long okay. time to get somebody hired if we're going to have our own. <clears throat> we at least, I think, owe it to the county to explore the options that might be out there. And maybe no other county engineer wants to share their position with us. But we need to find that out now rather than saying, oh, I, we can always do that and share it. I think by the size of our county, we need our own engineer. I mean, Asking one person to run two counties, especially with the size of ours, is a tall task. It's not that big of a county. Well, I would disagree with you, Shirley. I had a conversation with Roman Lenson, who was a shared engineer between two counties. And after a short period of time, year or so, he went back to his the county that he's been servicing and continues today and said, I will work with one county not to make your choice and so chickasaw county decided that that was the best in their interest and they hired roman full-time and so that's that's an experience in this local area and they're not as large of a county road wise as we are so i think my opinion is is that a shared engineer may be a good short-term solution like what we're what we're currently doing but a uh, long-term <clears throat> commitment creates issues that I'm afraid may not be in our best interest. Is it worth having a discussion with Nick to see how he would feel about that? Because there are other companies in Iowa that are successfully sharing an engineer right now. And I think Melanie made a good point that I hadn't considered is that um, there could be some cost savings here if this were to work out. He's, he can hit the ground running. He knows county business like the back of his hand. I think it's worth worth questioning. It's worth asking. So we can't, to my understanding, we can't let any bids until we have a full-time engineer. So or if you have 2080 agreement, or we have the agreement. A shared agreement, but I asked her last week right out, if you remember, how long that needs to be. And she said it needs to be at least a year. A year. Yeah. It's going to Which would give us, us a year to find a full-time engineer. It's going to take us a long time to find Otherwise, the public just needs to be prepared that we may not be letting any bids and road projects next year may not happen. Right. If that's the way we want to go. But right now we're sitting with nothing. Not an adequate pool to do that with. Now we could all sign a pledge of conduct and hopefully somebody would apply, but that's that's a whole other issue. I guess it would be. <clears throat> well, I mean that was the that was what Nikki said. Why we have a, a reduced pool? We are not getting help. That's, that was her personal opinion. Yes, it was. I think that's the the reality that well, nobody wants to talk about opinion. the elephant in the room. It's the reality, and it's what we can. We have no chain of command. There is a chain of command. There, there was never since I've been on here. There was no place to go. It's in the employee handbook and yeah, it's shared with you by the county attorney three times. No. It was three never times. the county attorney was yeah. shared just lately. No, he shared this back in the spring. He, yes, it was shared at least two years ago in another situation. There is a chain of command. Yeah. The chain of command for the secondary roads crew is if they have disgruntlements or concerns, they go to their foreman. Yep. If that if that foreman is who they have to discussion about, or they don't get their answers there, they go to the superintendent of roads. Then they go to the county engineer, and then they go to the HR director, who we pay to be HR director, and that's the county attorney. Mm -hmm. We can't allow what's usurping that process. What's ever been done? Nothing. 
they because there's people spending two hours at a time in the garage shops that's usurping the whole process. Yeah, how many hours have you spent in the engineer's office? I check in with the engineer's office every week about oh. things on the agenda so I can get the facts and data so I have the, the right information. That's what every, everybody should be checking with the engineer's office to get facts and data for decisions. I will do that for the rest of the time I serve on this board. Yeah. But I'm not going to go out and spend two hours in the county shop with the guys. That's not what we can do. That's just the engineer. Nor have I, sure. Have you? Nope. I wrote on a snow pack. I've been to the county shops because they call and ask me to come because they have nobody to talk to. Zero. Did they try to talk to their foreman first? Then the superintendent? No, I just then the engineer? Yeah. Mark? What's ever been done? Late one you upper were taken to the here. woodshed on Monday of last week, and you didn't look for information, it. Mr. Chairman. If one person is talking on the floor, is it proper etiquette for someone to be interrupting? It, it would be proper etiquette to talk on the foundation. Yes. But I let me finish then. Let me see. Go ahead. Last Monday, it was very clear from the person at the DOT who knows the law, Iowa Code and the Attorney General's opinion, and it's in the packet each of you received. Do not go and talk to disgruntled employees at the shops on a regular basis and usurp the engineer's duties. That's the engineer's job. It's the superintendent's job. If you don't follow that chain of command, it's the same as the military. You have a chain of command for a reason. Don't usurp the engineer. What's ever been done? Nothing's ever happens. Stop. It goes all the way to the top. Wait, hold on. It goes all the way to the top and nothing's ever been done. Not one thing. Are you done? Can I ask a question? How did Miss Nikki Stan show up at her one of our meetings? Who asked her to? Because around this table, we decided to have her serve on the interview committee. That's in the minutes. And as soon as we did that, I realized she can't serve on the interview committee. One of the people works for the DOT. That's not appropriate. But she offered to come and speak to the Board of Supervisors. I'm like, that'd be great. That'd be wonderful if you still want to speak on the she agenda. She never contacted me. We put things on the agenda all the time. Did, did any of these people contact you? Um, no, they did not. Okay, so why is that different? Why is that different? I was copied on that email that when Shirley copied my me, Nikki, and the county attorney and saying that we probably can't have her on the committee since one of the applicants is a DOT employee. And so she said, let's get her on the agenda just to talk outside the specific employees. <clears throat> and I think it was very informative and insightful. I'm glad we had her here. It, it's kind of getting to the point of embarrassing right now, you guys. We need to do what's right for this county. You cannot usurp the county engineer. And I'm talking right now, and I want to finish this thought. It is wrong to break that chain of command and let the employees talk to you without including the, the HR director, Andy Vandermotten. Not one of you stepped foot in that engineer's office the first two years you served. Oh. Come on. Have you? Yes, I have. When? Surely it's yes. not appropriate. It is appropriate because you yeah. guys. I don't think you have the authority to call any one of us out on anything. It's your personal opinion. Take your personal opinion somewhere other than the board table, please. I'm going to finish my thought. Why would you? This, it might be my personal opinion, but when I took the oath to be a supervisor, I took an oath to serve this community. And in serving this community, we need to do our homework and do what's right for the whole community and work within the policies and procedures of this county. And what you guys are doing is not working within the policies and procedures of this county, and it's caused us to lose a really good engineer that was respected the entire state of Iowa and served on committees in Iowa that brought money to the counties. And I'm not done talking yet. We lost a really good engineer. We lost a roadside manager. 
we're in a pickle right now and we need to do what's right. We need to be able to do what's right. You know, put your tail between your legs and, and move forward, admit where there's wrong and do what's right. We have a chance to do what's right. So we got the best rock in the state of Iowa. We got some of the worst roads that have been managed. Management is terrible. Drive down the gravel roads. I drove them Saturday. We're going five miles an hour. Just to take we're pulling a wagon. It was so rough. They, we got to get back to letting these guys run these road graders make the decision that grade, grade that road three times or twice to get them back in shape. We're so far behind and backwards. It's terrible. That's a discussion you can have with Nick yep. when he's on the agenda today at 10 30. Yep. I'm sure he has some answers for you. Yep. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to suggest that so that the public has an opportunity to make their opinion known on this matter that. Starting uh, and put it on next week's agenda, please, Ben, that we allow at near the time or adjacent to the time of the cat of the of Nick Rismans and the county road report that we allow 15 minutes for public comment on roads, bridges and culverts with three minutes per person that desires to speak and they'll sign up on a sheet beforehand so that we know who is speaking. <coughs> <laughs> they have an opportunity to express their opinion of what is being done with our roads. I think that's a risky, risky move there, Steve, because if you have more than five people, you're 15. That's pretty tough road to go down. I mean, if someone feels that strongly about it, then they need to get put on the agenda for their own time slot. I, I just believe that's probably a better way to go there. I see where you're coming from. But you do you see where I'm coming from too? I know it's risky, but I think the public that gives the public an opportunity to address this specific issue. I it's think limited, and it's limited to exactly what you hear from we're focusing. Public. We're not focusing on ditches, we're focusing on roads, bridges, and culverts, the three things that are on mandate. I had suggested we have a public forum. Previously, mm -hmm. that that wasn't going to happen, but I still think it would be. But people come and talk. We don't respond. People can express their opinions. I think in regard, everybody agrees. We put down a lot of rock. There has been no rain, so you really can't work the roads. Decent. It ain't. Rain. It ain't. It isn't just this year. It's been been going on. You can't. You can't grade a road in two passes. A 40 foot, a 30 foot road, you got a 14 foot blade, and the angle if you're down to 13, how can you cover a 30 foot road with a 13 foot blade? Two passes and do it right. But I just my question. Engineers, if they all hear that in their counties, how bad the roads are. Iowa, rural Iowa is gravel roads, and they're yeah. going to be in bad shape sometimes because of weather and use. Yep. You've got 90,000 pound equipment traveling our secondary roads now, doing a lot of damage to our roads. That's the equivalent of 10,000 vehicles per pass. We have, we're known in the six county area to have the worst roads of the six county of the surrounding counties. Based on whose information? Well, that's the opinion, surely. That would be may not be may not be your opinion, surely, but it certainly is others, other engineers and people around us. I would base I would like to see that based in fact and data. Oh, that's great, surely. Go ahead and research it. <laughs> So do we want to have the public comment se session and procedurally, if you say 15 minutes, three minutes max, we just have the first five people who call, get those, and then they go the next week, or do you want to have it be longer? Or, or I want to know how to I'd set up the agenda. I would think if we're going to do it, we just have a, a separate meeting. And I think for them, that's what they want to do. That's an idea, but I'm saying that we can do it. They can put it on there as part of the agenda each week. And the person that signs up, one, two, three, four, five. That's who first speak. Are you saying the first five that show up that show up morning not here. and sign up? No. Or do they sign up with me ahead of that time? Or how do you want to do it? I think they need to call ahead. I think you should do what they do at the state house, with Senate and House hearings, and make sure that you have equal representation. So you no. can ask people no. when they call, and they'll be pro or con to hear from the entire community. We're 
we're giving we're giving the public an opportunity to address to both the road our engine our temporary engineer and the roadside superintendent their opinions and the problems that they face and they have three minutes to do so on roads bridges and culverts should we the first if we do this the first week should you allow a half an hour so we can get 10 people in because that's going to be what people want to do it and then following weeks do a shorter amount of time i would say just continue we've got a busy agenda next week for example yeah, we with with uh different okay. things that are already booked for that yeah so nice. i would say find it over for a week or so and bring it up besides up next week <laughs> can we tax so, that to the end of our meeting what we could other than i think we that would be like mac next week you what steve's talk. saying was he was going on right on the time that the engineers and the mention something here well but so why can't they start at the end then and just stay on the year that that's up to ben on the agenda and see how the agenda works so that's what we're going to do next week we're going to do the agenda and see how the agenda works i don't understand why if people with that concern why they're not calling the engineer's office just like they call treasurer's office they call recorder's office they call uh p and z administrator if they have an issue sometimes they, do they can just call sometimes they do and they don't get the answers they're looking for maybe they don't have the full story and they're making assumptions until they actually make the call and have the Let's conversation an opportunity to find out surely then i would say that you make sure you have equal representation but I don't, the problem with that is i don't know that there's a pro or con there isn't two no. sides to this it's some time for people to just give their their, opinion, their opinion. opinion so how do you say you gotta have people on both wait, sides wait, I'm, saying it I'm not to just give your opinion that's what it is i yep. think we've reached the point my opinion is we've reached the point of ridiculousness and we need to move forward rationally with common sense and look at a shared agreement mm -hmm. and right. ask nick Grissom to keep me interested 15 minutes, yes or no? Yes. No. No. I, by what, I will say that, and that it should be an extended forum at the end of the meeting. I just think about it a little more, I guess, do a little pondering on it. And, uh, and, and I also would believe it should be in the evening where people can actually be here for it. Well, I think this is something that we work have. to be here, and that's not, you know. Obviously, this is something that's going to need further discussion. We will table this to a different yeah. meeting. Yeah. Okay. Next on the agenda, 10 o'clock, Andrew Vandermeer, the county attorney, legal questions. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Well, what do we have today? Would you like to repeat the chain of command for the Winnishie County employees so we can all be clear? I think we've beaten we've done, it. We've beaten that There's a difference between what? chain of command for HR and chain of command for the engineer's office, if that's what you're talking about, because I don't supervise those employees beyond HR. Right. Um, those decisions regarding policy, road policies, that decision gets made by the engineer. That doesn't go beyond that. Um, you guys tell them what you want done, and how and where, and finance it. The engineer makes the decision as to how it gets done. Yeah. So any disgruntlement or issues from an employee that's working the roads, how does that go up then? If they talk to their supervisor, they talk to the engineer. And by their supervisor, I'm talking about whoever is in charge in the road department for that employee. And I mean, ultimately, it's the engineer's call. It's not, not mine, it's not yours. It's as long as he is uh, deciding how best to put those practices in place that implement the policies that you've implemented, it's the engineer's fault. He would come to you if it was 
Right. If there was a, treating treated correctly as an employee, or a, if there was a harassment issue, or a uh, uh, you know something under the policy manual, yes, then it would come to me. But it doesn't normally. So if we create a policy, does it have to be in writing? We just tell them what we want done, or how does that be? What kind of policy? Well, I say if we we prefer the role to be graded three times, use it at the discretion of the road grader if he thinks even if the road should even be graded or not, you know. That's so we draw that. some fine line between what the engineer's duties are. I mean, because you're gonna have places where grading is gonna cause uh, yeah, no I mean, this, but, you know, it's, discretion of the guy around the grader would know. I mean he's got Yeah, and I would think that would be the case now. Or yeah. Most likely should be. Yeah. But right, ultimately, it's the engineer's responsibility to tell them. Yeah, but I mean, we said we said policy. What would the policy be? I mean, it's a, well, I don't know. You plan. have your policy is we want the roads graded, we want the culverts clear. Yeah. We want these bridges replaced. How that gets implemented is the engineer's call. So you don't. And you don't micromanage the policy to say you'll do it three times, you'll do it east west twice. And yeah, you know, I mean, that's what that, I that's I don't think you can do, I don't think you go that far. Your policy is, uh, you know, we need rock or whatever, you know, yeah. and here's the funding to do it. And this is five year plan, this is basically the policy that has been set in place up to now, yeah. and we review that every year. <laughs> and Dylan, thank you for the contact with Alliant because John Halverson had been frustrated over trying to get any response out of Alliant for that piece of sidewalk that created the trip hazard down there. And so, hey, hey, if it gets replaced in that, you know, like, uh, uh, let's not get here and wait. <laughs> for the public's benefit, uh, there was a trip hazard down here on the sidewalk down by the intersection corner right down below us here. And they We've been unsuccessful in trying to get that resolved. I asked Andy if he would contact the client, which he did, and they responded very favorably to his to his uh, question. So now we'll see if it gets done. But it is a it is a liability. Unfortunately, the kids with the spray cams yesterday did not trip on it. <laughs> but. <laughs> And publicly thank you to the volunteers who cleaned up that mess yesterday. It's uh, taking care of it quickly. There's still some we have to do. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Same week. Well, we've got eight minutes here before the next agenda item, if I'm looking at this correctly. We need to go back to discussing the hiring process. I Where, don't think we do. Well, we need to know what we're doing from here forward. We're, Are we just in limbo? We have the we have everything set in place right now where we're going forward looking for firms. We do have the RFQ deadline coming up. I don't remember the exact date. Middle of next week, I think it is. Or getting a firm to be us to search for us, to hire a firm to search for us. And Steve reported that he had contacted a few firms and we and you can either have them contact me if they need the RFQ paperwork, or I emailed it to you guys if you want to forward it directly to a firm. So that's fine too. I'll, I'll send that to you after I've talked with them today. Okay. Because uh, I think it's best coming from you yeah. as the auditor. We can go back to committee reports if someone wants to discuss something a little more in length. Certainly no, not. I got nothing on that. Was it a hard no from the group to look into the shared agreement? Or are we going to explore that at the same time? My opinion is after we've uh, already completed this RFQ process, and if we don't, we can talk about it at that point. But we've already started down a road and make it. We've made offers out there for 
this uh, for someone to assist us. I think we're not complete with that yet. I agree. I think it would save us time to start looking into it now. At the same time, we're waiting for the RFQs and consulting firms, research firms. We have two knows. I guess I'd just see what we can help with the firms first and then go from there. What is your answer? We've got in yeah. 10 days or so, we can decide then. Surely sometimes you have to respect other people's decisions. I'm working for the county. I mean, just because you think it's a good idea doesn't mean it's a good idea. I'm so can you respectfully respect other people's decisions for a change? So you're saying that other people sitting at this desk are not working for the mm -hmm. county, that other elected officials are not working for the county because we don't agree with you, Shirley? Is that nope. correct? Nope, you're putting words in my mouth. I'm saying I work for this county and I think it's in the county's best, best interest for us to explore at the same time a shared agreement mm -hmm. and find out if that's possible at the same time we're waiting for our well, That's all I'm saying. For the record, I would agree with Shirley. We should start moving forward with that just to see if there is anybody interested in sharing. Now, yeah, legally, we can talk to and how you go about that. Well, that would have been a question while Andy was here. Well, so we can ask Andy if we decide that that's something we could do to save time. And, and I think efficient. we've gone there where we're not interested in it at this point in time. I would like to get a long term engineer put in place. Okay, Matt. I'll do a brief report on the meeting last Wednesday since we're doing committee reports. We, Great, went, we went to the uh, training presented by ISAC and the uh, Department of Management on the new property tax bill. And so Steve and Shirley and I were all there. Um, there were discussions about the uh, what the bill said, as well as the details of how it's going to be resolved from the Department of Management and our perspective. Um, highlights are: we don't really know what our restrictions are for for our property tax levy until we find out what our growth rate is. So. Um, the assessor's office establishes our uh, the assessed values, but we we won't know if, if we have restrictions and if they are how much those restrictions are until the state issues the um, assessment limitations, which are commonly known as rollbacks. So once we get our rollbacks, which are usually in mid to late October, then we'll we can make an estimate. Although our our actual valuation won't be completed till December of what our growth rate is. Once we get those rollbacks, if the, the growth rate, the restrictions fall in the categories of zero to to three percent growth rate, three to six percent growth rate, or over six percent growth rate, and then that establishes which kind of restrictions we might have. So with those rollbacks, we might be able to estimate which chunk will fall into but we want we won't know exactly until we have the full valuations so i process the full valuations in december if we get a restriction it will restrict the percentage or restrict the ability for you to set the uh, levy rate if we're under three percent you'll be able to use your current levy rate as the maximum if we're between three and six percent your new levy rate will have to be at least two percent lower and if we're over six percent your new levy rate has to be at least three percent lower so we know we won't go raise the levy rate and we may have to lower it um the net effect being that you'll still have growth you'll still have new money next year more than you do this year but it may not be the same amount as what your current levy rate generates um, as far as the growth so for example, if you have about 4% growth rate, then after you take the 2% restriction off, you only got 2% left to work with. 
just as an example. Mm -hmm. the, the actual calculation of those numbers, the Department of Management presented detailed spreadsheets and uh, ways that it's calculated. So I will do those calculations for you once we have the actual numbers, but that'll kind of set the maximum. Of course, like any of the state laws, anytime you're talking about restrictions, that's only the maximum. You can always go less. They are never going to stop you from going lower. Um, also with this is there's a whole new timeline of how we're going to uh, put this together. So by mid-March, you deadline is March 15th. You will have to have uh, proposed tax rate decided. Um, and then new to this bill, rather than just publishing it in the newspaper, like we always have in the past, we, I have to send a notice to every taxpayer that shows the proposed tax rates of the county, the school, and cities, if there's any cities or if they live in the in the city limits, to say here's what these proposed rates would do to your taxes. And so not only whether you have a notice in the paper, you'll have a mailing that goes out to everybody. So that's going to be obviously an additional expense and mailing all the taxpayers, basically saying here's how much uh, the proposed rate is increasing or whatever it is, and here's when the public hearing is and your time to be able to come and make your concerns known. <clears throat> so that's why that we have till April 30th to actually hold the budget hearing. So they extended that part of the deadline, but because of this extra mailing and stuff, it actually is going to move up when you have to kind of have your final decisions made. But Ben, isn't this focused on the county? General levy and rural this is only levy and not on school districts on any other line. Of it, this only affects the general levy and the rural levy. It does not affect your supplemental levies. Supplemental levies are restricted in use, but not in dollar amount. So um, we already pay almost everything we can pay out of supplemental out of supplemental because those that are allowed are already in there um so well we can talk about more details if there are other things we can smooth there or not um so that we're basically going to be have limited growth for the next year in these extra steps to take to adopt our budget really for the next four years for the next four years the current bill mm -hmm. says this is the new law for four years after which time you have to be down to three dollars and fifty cents in the general fund and three dollars and ninety five cents in the rural fund that is for those counties over three dollars and fifty cents like us um it's unrealistic to think that this rolling back two percent a year will actually get us down to three dollars and fifty cents the anticipation is that that's going to force the legislature to continue to address this over the next four years to how to resolve this five years from now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, all of the above un, unfunded mandated. Yes. Past 1015 next on the agenda discuss and answer idle roadcast request for consideration of sale of county property. I, I figured this should be on the agenda because if there's not interest in selling the property or if there's reasons not to sell it, you just need to tell them no so they can be looking at other options. If there's still, if you still think this is possible, then I'm sure they're willing to wait. But if they, if it isn't, why don't, why are we making them wait if we don't want to move forward? So I think we need to give them an, at least an answer of what you have so what you're thinking so far does everyone have that i think we have a lot of that residents in freeport who had experienced some pretty major flooding um if we move to do anything with that land i think we need to keep it in the county um back pocket keep it in native planning for right now because it helps with flood mitigation and with the future, um, I think we should hold on to land we have next to our recycling center.
I would be in agreement with Shirley, especially since we've already entered into two agreements with the DNR and somebody else. <laughs> with that, and it is part of the and the pension uh, floodplain part of that. So I think I would be not in favor of selling that property at this point. And I'd be for I mean, yeah, I mean, if we want to sell it, we can sell it. All we got to do is prorate back. If there was fifteen hundred dollars they gave us on four and a half acres, you prorate it back for. If it's been in five years, you got to pay them back for five years is all. It's an old life of death thing. I guess it's a industrial park. I guess where my consideration would come in would probably not be for the entire lot, but just what they may need for the solar array. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I was leaning. Yeah. I don't know where you guys are. Yeah, I think I would be interested to know what Rotocast, uh, realizing that that is, there is a, uh, it falls within the flood plain map. It's not in the river portion of it, but it is in a drainage portion. If they have considered in their thoughts of putting solar in there, if there was, if their solar would be impacted by that, or is it going to be high enough and strong enough to handle any water that water come through there? And I know, I did notice that the property that they had uh, had uh, singled out as being the section that they wanted uh, there was a there's a piece of old road right away that exists and then a small triangular piece uh, i'd like to see if if they have interest of instead of using further down into that other broader portion of that property if they could configure in that piece mm -hmm. which is really something is pretty much it follows with stream bed and so forth that it would not be it would not be impacted by dnr or any dnr requirements for them to have solar in there so i think that would, i'd like to know what what their thoughts would be on that but i'm not i'm not opposed to uh trying to accommodate rotocast as being a long-standing company that's been that a, a good part of winnesheet county this would have to be done through a public hearing if we sell taxpayer mm -hmm. land, it the taxpayers own it. I think we would need to hear from everybody concerned at the table in that public hearing. And, and I'm, I'm opposed I'm, to selling it. I'm in no way to say that you need to decide if you're selling it today. I just want to know if there were three people that say no, we should just tell people or tell them no now so that they could be looking at other options or <laughs> take this off the table. If you still have at least three of you interested in pursuing it, then we can move forward. Thursday, I think we may see more discussion with them about have they checked in with the DNR and possible restrictions on that. I think I had asked for this property before and for a building site. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, so is the solar unit going on top of a building or is it going at the freestanding? Freestanding is what they indicated the other day at the, when they made their presentation. <clears throat> as far as your agreement with the DNR, that's between you and the DNR. I don't think that's broadcast. You would have to square up or find out if there are responsibilities you have under that contract. As far as flood plain, you, this is not in the city limits and the county's flood plain maps are, we haven't adopted any ordinance. So there is no restriction right now for building there. We're in the middle of that process because we have like the 90 days time after the maps were made official. So six months from now, it might be a different situation. Yeah. <clears throat> so we should maybe look and see what the floodplain map that we're going to probably adopt looks like. Yeah. That, that is that is already in place. It's fresh over to the board of whether you want to implement restrictions, an ordinance that restricts building and floodplains. Because if you do, then it opens up the National Flood Insurance Program. If you decide not to implement the floodplain restrictions, then you don't get any funding and don't have access to flood insurance. I think um, we'll need to go back to what Tony Phillips distributed to all of us a few weeks ago and start this process, uh, finish this, 
before we make any unwise decisions that could impact flooding for our residents in Freeport. When I asked Tony about the this is the this is the floodplain map. I think you may have that also, Mark. This is this floodplain map. Yeah, no, this is the one that this is the overlay. Yes. That's the overlay that Tony gave me of the of where the flood is and the area basically that they're talking about falls within all of that flood floodplain. And we have no rich we have no restrictions on solar in a floodplain. The only the question would be whether or not, and it is not a, it's not a DNR stream. It's not, it's not recognized as a stream. Does it fall under that category? But it does have, if they could, you know, I mean, that's up to them and up to, I think they said Decor Electric, whether or not they would be able to put that field in there to where it wouldn't be impacted by, by waters coming down through there. I mean, that's a, that's not, that is a possibility in my mind. It would just re but I want them to look at that other piece, and I'd like to know their answer on whether or not the adjacent piece of of uh, Alliant Energies that they own, if there's a possibility that can be acquired by them, where their needs would be less. I have a question about um, future use for Winnipeg County. We own that land; it belongs to the taxpayers of Winnipeg County. And with solid waste and recycling, a lot of changes on the horizon and, and possible growth on the horizon, we don't know what our future need for that land may be in addition to seed plots for native species and flood mitigation. I think it would be unwise to hurry and get rid of land that we may want someday as we change in our need for solid waste and recycling. Perhaps Rotocast will be can answer those questions and maybe they would consider being on our agenda next week. Is that possible? Ben? I'll contact them and see if if they would like to be on next week or some weeks. So we well, I'm going to say possibly two yeah. weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. 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 Questions on if the panel could be interrupted by flood or not, or how that would work. Definitely. Some questions we need answered. Yeah. Let me see if I can get them on. Oh, which week? Two weeks from now, if we, if that works for them, I'm not going to speak for them. You know, I thought. Would be. I'll see if they can answer both if the floodplain question and if they've researched some of those other parcels in that area, like the commission. I thought it was interesting at the solid waste meeting last Monday uh, that they're looking into getting a grinder, which would probably reduce our airspace at what 30% or something like that. And then potentially regrinding what's already in there to extend the life of the landfill because of smart ideas. It's a long time in the planning. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we can go ahead, move ahead with that because if it comes yeah. to this out to where we're 15, 20 years in the future, we may not have a landfill. Yeah. I mean, there might be something totally different. You might be incinerating it or lots of other options, but opening up a new landfill would not be cheap. No. So I was glad to hear that they're far, that far along the process. And they were talking about tree material at first, and that was five. Yeah. For every five loads, it reduces it to two loads. Yeah, and you got a lot of volume there. It would be nice to see where just a load of garbage actually decreases the it's 25, 30 percent. I think, what was it? It needed what 15 percent? Well, was that the reduction to make it feasible mm -hmm. to do? And that's where they wanted to have some test samples, yeah, with, with just regular garbage, garbage to see how much it reduces it. Then you could also do fires with it too, so you could have a 
once a month grind tire, you know, which are so much tire and grind it when they can use that over the top. Well, you can kind of double purpose, get rid of them and still. Kind of like the other glass now. Well, it's 10 30. Uh, next on the agenda, Nick Rissman, Kenton County Engineer. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Uh, does everybody still have the prices that we gave you last week for the motor gauges? If not, I have a copy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a copy. I'll take Thank you. So last week we met with the mechanics, um, had a long discussion with them. They actually ran also down to uh, Dubuque County to look at a machine that Dubuque County had for John Deere. Uh, they've already seen them, the uh, Caterpillars. Obviously we have the multiple of them of our own. Um, so the thing we came, up, came away with was, I think we wanna recommend the cat. You know, it does come with a higher price tag, but long term, it's going to be cheaper for the county, in my opinion. Um, you know, even if you look at the the trade in values uh, on these pieces of equipment, uh, the O1 cat being in uh, you know, over twenty thousand dollars more than the John Deere from two thousand and eight. Uh, now there is some engine hour differences there, but. Um, I think long term, that's going to be the benefit uh, with Ziegler being right here in Postville too. That's that's also a huge thing. Uh, um, you know, the drop box in town, and then just having a, a continuation of uh, a similar mach machine. Um, you know, all your parts uh, are going to be able to be used mostly on the same machine. Granted, different model years and everything, but uh, having having the same make. Uh, in the shop, I think is good long term. That's what I have over in Howard County, and it's it's helped out significantly there. Um, Are they willing to accept the purchase with a variable trade in, depending on what we decide at the time? It actually, yeah. So, and with that, one of the conversations that we had with the mechanics was actually adjusting what we're going to trade in in December when we get the the newest motivator to come in. Um, both uh, Martin Equipment and Ziegler were, were okay with changing that out um, uh, where we're actually going to be proposing that 111 gets traded in here in December um, because that's the machine that is has most potential for failure as of right now. Uh, so I think it's going to be in the best interest of the county to, to get that one traded in. Uh, whether or not we make a motion um, on this, I think you make a motion based on the total purchase price. Uh, you up know, to what's that? A purchase price up to. Well, you, they have the they have the dollar amount there um, mm -hmm. for Ziegler and the dollar amount for Martin Equipment. Um, I would make that. The recommendation would be to to make the the motion to, to purchase the machine based on that dollar amount. That gives us the option later to trade in whatever yes, we want. That's what it was. Um, yeah. You know, it's. I think it'd just be the better way to go there. But yeah. Now, if we do trade in one eleven in December, it's going to make the the trade in for one eleven. You know, on this uh, for Ziegler is fifty seven five, but. We've talked to Jared, and that would be up to sixty thousand because they're going to get that a year earlier. Now, our our total value that we're our total cost, excuse me, is going to have to be more this year, but it'll make up for it the next trade when we're when we're trading in one of these other ones. Sure. Yeah, I think that I think your analysis of the cat is a good is a good move. I think the resale value alone is a significant offset, and makes the most sense. So I guess we're probably looking for a motion to spend up to $380,000 with the possibility of trade-ins of number 132 or 141, lowering the purchase price. I'd actually recommend a motion for the 437.5. Okay. 
the total purchase price of that okay. machine, and then that gives us options in the future. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second for the purchase price of the cat maintainer for four hundred and thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars. Is there any further discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries unanimous. What was the price of the cap? The new one we're getting now in December. Uh, I guess I would price. Same price, same price, yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh, as far as project updates, the box culvert that Brendan is building, all the concrete has been poured. Just waiting on some beam breaks before they can start backfilling. Hopefully, they'll be able to start backfilling the section that they poured first yet this week, and um, they're going to have to be moving the crane out in order to remove the remainder of the existing bridge. So they're moving right along out there, but uh, assuming all the beam breaks go well on the concrete, they should be backfilling either end of this week or early next week. About how much longer do you think before they're able to pour the deck? Well, everything's been poured. Oh, deck's all poured. the concrete's been poured, yeah. So we're just waiting on, on uh, beam breaks mm -hmm. on that stuff, yeah. yeah. Yep, if all the beam breaks break high enough, then it's just back feeling. And just remind us again where this culvert is. Is, the, is that uh, North Bear up top of my head? Oh, that's the one up by oh, East of Highlandville up there, yeah. The one in that valley that's got a really sharp turn both before and after the. Yeah, it's right at the intersection. Of, it's, it's very close to the intersection right below. Well. I don't have anything else to report, I guess. Does anyone have anything for Nick? No, they're still continuing this uh, shouldering work. Uh, that I'm not aware of, I guess. Yeah, I'll have to ask Jeff and can get back to you on that. Mm -hmm. As our interim county engineer, how would you describe the condition of Winnesheet County roads compared to Howard, Winnesheet, or Almaki? What's your experience as an engineer in Northeast Iowa? Uh, I would say it's not good right now as compared to how we're beyond me, but that's that's my experience in health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have those nice flat grid roads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many passes do you think a maintainer should make? I think every road is different on that, I guess, but it's not an answer. Yeah, you know, it depends on the width. It depends. There's a lot of different characteristics that would that would make that decision. I guess. You know. Yeah. Anyone else? Should be fine. Looks like you're getting easy today. Uh, actually, I have another question. The. the Class C road up in uh, under Bear Creek. Was he getting back to us or something? This actually, yeah, it's a good question. So I actually had tried to call him last week and I had not had a response. I left a, a voicemail for him. Um, I know Jeff actually talked to the uh, landowner to the west, and has, she has indicated that he has not gotten hold of her. I think he talked to her originally, like that first week, but then has not followed up with anything. So. Jeff and I were both following up on that last week and we had not. Yeah, he said he'd have something that next week or 10 days. And that has been mostly going on all together. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's that. time to clear his stuff. He needs to get his stuff off of that road. So I know he indicated that he was going to be gone quite a bit in September. So he may, be, he may be out of town right now, but the Iowa law states that we have to serve him. Um, uh, documentation and tell him that he has to have it removed within a certain period of time. Um, or we will be doing it and then billing him for that. So I need to refresh myself on that code section and talk to Andy, make sure that we're doing everything correctly. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess if he can get back to us, might as well send mm -hmm. that out anyway. So sure. that okay. get that time started if you yeah. want to make sure yeah. it out before the. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Thank you. We want Nick to go ahead with doing the current paperwork. Yeah, yeah. I would have, yeah. might as well. It's the other guy who wants to come back to us. So. They would. He was going to be gone and never. So go ahead and get a hold of Andy and figure out what, what needs to be done. Because <clears throat> I think there was also a, another landowner at the fire end there, too. And then it was also because of the DNR on that detention bar. Correct. If we did do that level C or do the vacating, we'd have to make sure that the that ground on the structure had access to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Nick. Yep. And just for everyone's information, there is a 1.30 p.m. department heads meeting. Thank you all very much. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Appreciate Thank you. it. Yeah. Just let you know, we are breaking ground on that $18 million facility. It's going to be in Albuquerque County, but it's a stone throw from Winnishie County. So uh, some of the service stuff that Jeff was talking about, we should, we should be able to uh, be that much better. Opening this time next year. So it's by next year. Yeah. So thank you guys very much. Thank you. I greatly yeah. appreciate it. Yep. You do. See ya. Anyone have anything else or an entertain a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion and a second for adjournment. Any further discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. Aye. I'll be here for office hours again today. Thank you. Thank you. The next call. Department heads. 130. Thanks. Thanks. For those online, we'll be turning the uh, camera off now. Thank you for attending.